Mother students, this is Mrs. Shri Vidya from Pune Vidya Shram. Let's have a quick recap of the previous session. We read about what is matter, the three states of matter, and also we read about the properties of solids, liquids, and gases. And also I showed you the periodic table, how it is arranged in rows and columns. Now, what do you mean by matter? Anything which occupies space and its mass is called as matter. If we look around us, like living organisms like plants, human beings, the food we eat, drink water, all these are examples of matter. And matter can be classified in number of ways. On the basis of physical property, matter is classified as solids, liquids and gases and on the basis of chemical properties it is classified as elements, compounds and mixtures. Now let us go in detail about this atoms and liquids. As I said to you before everything around us is made up of matter. Matter has mass and occupies space. All matter is composed of basic elements that cannot be broken down into substances with different chemical or physical properties. These are molecules and atoms. So, we will be studying about this molecules in the upcoming sessions. And also, today we are going to focus on the physical properties of matter that is solids, liquids, and gases. Just as all the houses are made up of bricks, in the same way, all the matter is made up of atoms. Thus, atoms are the building blocks of all the matter around us. All matter, if divided into its smallest possible parts, that would be known as autonomous or indivisible. So, here the Democritus has given about the atom that atoms are indivisible. You can see in this picture the scientist. An, an atom is the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. Atoms of most of the elements are very reactive and atoms are very very small in size that we cannot see through our naked eye. Only we can view under the powerful microscope and the size of an atom is indicated by its radius which is called as atomic radius. So atoms are measured in nanometers. It is less than millimeter. Now when we talk about atom, atom itself is very small. Inside the atom, we have three subatomic particles, namely protons, electrons and neutrons. Can you able to see the picture here? If, if you want to define an atom, the center of the atom is called as a nucleus. As we said in the structure of the cell, nucleus is a brain of the cell. Likewise, if you want to call an atom, it needs a nucleus. So, these three subatomic particles are charged particles. Protons are positively charged. Neutrons has no charge. Electrons possess negatively charged. So, now let us see the location of these subatomic particles inside the atom. Protons are present inside the nucleus. Electrons are present outside the nucleus and neutrons are present inside the nucleus. Protons and neutrons are present inside the nucleus. Now let us see the kinetic theory of matter. Matter consists of small particles called molecules. The molecules always move in random motion. The molecules attract one another with a force called as a cohesive force. Now we use the word molecule. What do you mean by a molecule? 
combination of one or more atom is called as a molecule. So, let us discuss about this molecule in the upcoming sessions and also a simple molecule which everybody knows that's our universal solvent that's water. What is the symbol of water? H2O. It is made up of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So that comprises the molecule of water. Now let us discuss about the state of matter. Matter is made up of a tiny particle called atoms and molecules. These particles are much too small that you cannot see through our naked eye. That's human eyes. The three states of matter are solid, liquid and gases. Ice, water and steam are three different states of matter of the same material. That is water. When it undergoes freezing, it becomes ice. And when we undergo evaporation, it becomes as a steam. That is a water vapor are released. And when it is cooled down, it is called as a condensation. Can you remember this slide here? The, in class 6, we discussed about the elements. That is numbering from the atomic number 1 to 20. What do you mean by the atomic number? So, let, let us describe this atomic number in the upcoming sessions. Now, let us see the symbols. Hydrogen, H. Helium, HE. Lithium, LI. Beryllium, B. Boron, B. Carbon, C. Nitrogen, N. Oxygen, O. Fluorine, F. Neon, NE. Sodium, NA. Magnesium, Mg. You can see the slide. You can see the first letter in the symbol always starts with the capital letter and the second letter will be in small letter. So, next, nitrogen, N. Oxygen, O. Fluorine, F. Neon, Ne. Sodium, Na. Magnesium, Mg. Aluminium, Al. Silicon, yes, I. Phosphorus, P. Sulfur, yes. Chlorine, Cl. Argon, Ar. Potassium, K. Calcium, Ca. These are the elements that is arranged from 1 to 20, which we had learnt in class 6. It is going to be like how you are reading tables in your mathematics. You are supposed to read the symbols every day in this order. So how you are supposed to read is hydrogen, H, helium, HE, lithium, Li, beryllium, BE, boron, B. Likewise you are supposed to learn. Now here you have a question which we had given it in our class work in the last year. Why is potassium denoted by the symbol K and sodium by the symbol Na? Why not potassium P and sodium? Yes, it is because the potassium K, it comes from the Latin word calium and Na, sodium Na comes from the Latin word natrium. Atoms, once again, let us recap these atoms. Atoms are the basic building blocks of matter that make up every day object. It is the smallest component of an element having the chemical properties of the element. There are over two different types of atoms around us. So, which we are told in the last slides, atoms are so small that they are not visible by naked eye. Fire, air, water and earth and also have their individual atoms which are connected with each other and also human beings, plants, animals, food, pen, pencil, the things which is surrounding us, table, chair, everything are the examples of matter. 
because it occupies space and volume. After atoms, a term for slightly bigger entities was coined that is termed as molecule. We are going to study this atoms and molecules for the next two sessions. So, all the atoms exist in two forms. One atom is the form of ions, another one in the form of a molecule. Now, let us see about elements. What do you mean by an element? A pure substance that consists of only one kind of atom is called as an element. The smallest unit of an element is atom. Elements cannot be broken down into smaller units. The elements are said to be the basic unit and the building blocks of a variety of substances. In your periodic table, you can see about 118 elements known to us today, out of which 92 are found in nature, while the remaining elements have been prepared artificially. Of all the naturally occurring elements, 22 are non-metals and 70 are metals. Now, we will be focusing in the next slides about the classification of elements. Now, let us see the characteristic of gases. No fixed shape or volume. It has a low density and it is easily compressible. Then the, what is the model of the gases? Very far apart you can see this picture. Travels at high speed, independent and its movement is random. It has a negligible force of attraction between them. Now let us see the properties of each of the states of matter. Now let us see for solids. So, for solids, they have a fixed shape and a fixed volume. The examples of solids are sugar, sand, iron, etc. Solids cannot be compressed much. Solids have high densities. They are heavy. Solids do not fill their container completely. Solids do not flow. Uh, this brick is a solid you can see from the picture. Solids, liquids mm -hmm. and the gases examples. So, this sol brick is a solid. Solid has a definite shape and a definite volume. And you can see this orange juice. It is a liquid. A liquid has a definite volume and but no definite shape. This balloon is filled with air. A gas can neither a definite volume nor a definite shape. The next, the examples of liquids are water, milk, fruit juicing, granite oil, kerosene, petrol, etc. Liquids have a fixed volume but they have no fixed shape. Liquids take the shape of the vessel in which they are placed. Like solids, liquids cannot be compressed much. They have moderate to high densities. They do not fill their container completely. Liquids generally flow easily. Then let us talk about the gases. Oxygen, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, air, nitrogen, steam. All these are examples of gases. Gases have neither a fixed shape nor a fixed volume. They acquire the shape and volume of the vessel in which they are kept. Gases can be compressed easily. Gases have low densities. They flow easily. Gases fill their container completely. Now, let us see about the liquids. Once again, we will recollect. Fixed volume, but no fixed shape. High density, not compressible. They generally flow easily. They do not fill their con container completely. They have moderate to high densities and they are usually less dense than solids. Now, you can see in this picture the model of solids. They are closely packed or you can say they are tightly packed. They occupy the space, maximum space. They have a regular pattern. They vibrate about fixed position. They are not free 
to move and they have a fixed shape and fixed volume normally hard and rigid large force need to change shape high density incompressible all these you can write it in a short point like this as a bulletin point this already you had read it in your lower classes about these characteristics of solids liquids and gases then let us see about the model of liquid you can see in this picture how it is arranged it arranged in clusters with molecules slightly further apart as compared to solid they are free to move about within confined vessel they take the shape of the vessel and they have a fixed volume but they have no fixed shape as we discussed about the elements now let us now describe the classification of elements in the previous session i explained to you lavoisier classified the elements into three types metals non metals and metalloids metals the elements which are hard lustrous that is shiny malleable they are been beaten into sheets ductile means they can be beaten into wires sonor sonorous which can able to make sound and good conductors of heat and electricity are called metals examples of metals iron copper gold silver aluminium etc non metals the elements which are brittle they'll be easily you can break non lustrous non malleable opposite of metals only you have the characteristics of non metals and metalloids metalloids are those which possess the characteristics of both metals and non metals example germanium so hope you would have understood this session i need all the students to view session 1 and session 2 once again and note down the points thank you children